Thank you, Steve. The G5 is a dream machine. It is exactly the machine all musicians have waited for. At Imagic, a lot of engineers are musicians too. Some of them are happy enough to get a machine, worked on it, did some optimizations, and obviously also did some benchmarking, and we all have been so surprised. As a benchmarking tool, we used a software instrument, a sampler, and I ask you, how many voices, how many notes do you think is it possible to play at the same time on that machine? 64, over 100. It's 1,000. It's more than 1,000 voices which can be played at the same time on that machine. This is amazing. All of the voices are high quality, 24-bit, and all of them are stereo. As a second example, if we look in studios, in professional studios, you see the big mixing consoles, very wide, lots of faders, many knobs. If you have a really huge project and you want to have this mixer now running in Logic, in software, you might want to have many EQs. Let's assume 100. 100 EQs, 8 bands each, and stereo each. This adds up to 1,600 bands. And guess what? The G5 does it. But it's even more surprising, it does it with only 25% CPU power. <laughs> the new architecture of the machines benefit logic greatly. As a music application, we handle a lot of audio streams. Obviously, the CPU power is great, but very often forgotten is the memory bandwidth. And this is very important for us. We have lots of audio streams going from one place in the machine to the other place, lots of buses, outputs, voices, everything. Many of them are uh, conti contiguous. That means uh, they don't fit in, a, in the caches. And I'm really excited that we have this machine now, that the combination of the G5 and Logic works so well. Instead of talking about music, maybe we should go for the demo. Phil? Thank you, Hank. So again, the, the venerable Mac on the left and our, and our fun PC on the right. As you know, uh, eMagic Logic is, is, is on the Mac and the latest version is not on Windows, so we have the most popular sequencer on the Windows side. That's Cubase. And uh, two great products. But we've got a very complex piece here, a piece that was actually created by BT, a great musician who uses a Mac, and you'll see in a minute why. And um, this is a piece of music created for a trailer for The Matrix. And since it's music, uh, we're going to play the PC first and then play the Mac, and, and I think there'll be a noticeable difference. Uh, in addition to what you hear, for those who can see the small CPU meters in the bottom right-hand corner of each display, you'll notice something different in, in how much CPU they use. So let's start with the PC first and give it a first shot at this musical piece. I'm sure that's not how BT meant for it to sound. <laughs> well, we could sit here and listen to this, or we could choose to use another computer. So let's take a listen to it on the Mac. Get tired okay. if you'd like to. Sure.
show clearly sounds a world better. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! That's pretty cool. So let's summarize. Adobe Photoshop over twice as fast on the Power Mac G5 as the fastest Pentium, I mean the fastest uh, PC money can buy a dual 3.06 Xeon. Luxology turned out to be 2.3 times faster on the G5. Wolfram Research turned out to be 2.3 times faster. And Logic, well, I don't know how to calculate that. <laughs> so in real world tests and in spec tests, we can clearly say We've caught up and with the PC and passed them on both integer and floating point to be the fastest computer in the world. Now, what about the future? Well, we're at 2 gigahertz today. IBM and Apple are today announcing that within 12 months, we'll be at 3 gigahertz. 3 gigahertz processor clock, that's up 50% within 12 months. And so, believe me, this architecture has legs. Power Mac G5, an amazing, amazing new machine. And we've got a video that I'd like to show you now. So let's run the video. <laughs> 